All right, now we continue with my exclusive interview with the 45th president, Donald J. Trump, where we discuss Biden's failing foreign policy, including the disaster that was known as the Afghanistan withdrawal. Now, remember, it was Joe Biden who abandoned our fellow Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan and lied because he said 13 days prior that he would never do that. He would never leave until all Americans were out. And while he left Americans behind, well, it shows Joe was weak. He didn't keep his promise. And by the way, his diplomacy and reckless foreign policy is clearly emboldening all of our adversaries around the globe and causing concern among our allies. Now, contrast Biden's failures with Donald Trump's success, you know, like destroying the caliphate, ISIS, that was formed when Joe was vice president, taking out uh, Baghdadi and associates and Soleimani, and of course, the historic Abraham Accords. Uh, de-escalating tensions with North Korea and, of course, keeping Iran in check the whole time and tearing up the disastrous nuclear deal and so much more. Now, I sat down with the 45th president, Donald Trump, uh, to discuss this and so much more. Take a look. The reason this is happening is, too, they don't respect our leader. And almost as importantly, when they watch that horrible withdrawal, the way they withdrew, I want, I'm the one that got it down to a very few soldiers. I wanted to get out, too. And we would have had a very similar schedule, but I would have taken the military out last. Yeah. I would have taken the American citizens that you talk about all the time out. And I would have taken the best equipment in the world, military equipment, $85 billion worth of military equipment we left behind. And by the way, 13 soldiers were killed. For 18 months under my... Conversations with Abdul, who's the leader of the Taliban. The last 18 months. For 18 months, months, of your months we didn't lose one soldier. And when they took the soldiers out first, and everybody's at the airport, and nobody knew what was happening. And by the way, a lot of bad people got on those airplanes, okay? Bad people, terrorists. A lot of bad people are on those planes. But we lost 13 soldiers. And the thing that nobody ever talks about, we also had a large number of soldiers horribly wounded, no legs, no arms. Their face was blown to smithereens. A tremendous number. Nobody ever talks about them. You told me in a previous interview that you told the leader of the Taliban, before you ever talked about any withdrawal, any planned withdrawal, you said to me that in no uncertain terms, you would obliterate him if he dared not to follow every dotted I, cross T, comma, Period. Abdul, I did. I did. Had a and conversation. Had a number of conversations. And didn't you at one point tell him, I know exactly where you are, and give him the exact coordinates where he was? No. I sent him a picture of his house. He said, but <laughs> where why? Where he was at the time. He said, but why, but why do you send me a picture of my house? I said, you'll have to figure that one out. But I said, if you don't... If you do anything from that point on, we didn't lose one soldier. I said, if you do anything, we're going to hit you harder than any country has ever been hit. He said, I understand your excellency. And he called me your excellency. I don't know if he calls Biden, but I will tell you this. We didn't lose one soldier in 18 months. And by the way, Biden got up and made a speech and he said that. Right. And they didn't follow the plan. We had a plan that was perfect, but they weren't adhering to it. So they would have adhered to it, but they weren't. Mm. But we were set to get out of Afghanistan. 21 years was ridiculous. The other thing we should have done is kept Bagram. We have an air base that we cost billions and billions of dollars to build a long time ago. Not for Afghanistan, but for China. One hour away from where China makes their nuclear weapons. And now China's going to be occupying it. So the difference is, is that you told the head of the Taliban, before you discussed what the actual plan would be, what the consequences would be if he didn't follow through. He understood that. Okay, so my next question is, now we watched for months when Joe Biden, before the, before the withdrawal, we watched the Taliban on the move. They were going from province to province to province to province. Different kind of leadership of the United States. The opposite, sort of like the opposite of when you defeated the caliphate. You pushed them back province after province, right? I wiped out the ISIS, the whole ISIS caliphate, 100%. That's why I tell the story about General Kane, right? Raisin Kane, General. We have great generals. We have great military. Not the people that are on television. General Raisin Kane, we knocked out the entire ISIS caliphate. And do you remember, I got it down to 97%. I said, all right, let Russia and these other countries do it now. And the fake news hit me. Well, he didn't get 100%. I was told that we couldn't do it. I was told that it would take three years, and I did it in three weeks. We have a great military, and they don't... They're so embarrassed by what's happening to this country. They're so embarrassed. 
but we knocked out the ISIS caliphate. I took out the two worst people in the world that killed, as you know, Baghdad that killed many of our, many of our soldiers and our people. When you see soldiers walking without legs, you know who did that to them. But uh, we did an incredible job, and they respected us. They were afraid of us. They respected us. And then all of a sudden, this guy pulls all the soldiers out. You don't pull the soldiers out first. You pull the soldiers out last. And I could just imagine Abdul when they say, the Americans have left Kabul. They have left. And Abdul saying, this guy's crazy. Of course they haven't left. They couldn't believe it. And, you know, I took a lot of heat when I called, when I spoke to him. It was a rough conversation, but, you know, got friendlier toward the end, to be honest with you, because they were going to do what I said. But the media said, why does he call this person? I called this person because that's where the action is. Mm -hmm. I called him. And he's still the leader, by the way, you know, of the Taliban, mm -hmm. Abdul. And, again, we didn't lose one soldier in 18 months. Now, in Chicago, last week, you lost many people, and 70 were shot. Can you believe those numbers? 70 were shot. In New York, where Letitia James rules, we have the worst crime that we've ever had. That's where Letitia James, she had, a work, she had a focus on murder and crime in New York, where they walk into stores with axes and they start swinging the axes at people. That's where she ought to be focused, not on how much is Mar-a-Lago worth. Mm. And by the way, and protecting banks that got back their money. By the way, not one bank got hurt. They didn't get hurt. So when I see that, and when I look at priorities, and I see something like took place today in New York, and then you see all these people being murdered and shot, people are afraid to come here, it's really sad. And yet, if you think about it, 18 months, not one person killed, not one soldier killed in Afghanistan. Look at the state of the country under Donald Trump. And now you look 20 months down the road and Joe Biden's been president. And you see dramatic, drastic changes. Drastic. Now, so the only criticism I ever hear of you is this, because people know we've known each other for almost, what, 30 years now. And people say, can you just tell them not to fight so much? Can you just tell them, don't say this so much? Can I, want, but can I, I respond to that? Yes. I have to fight. I'm under siege and I'm running a country. If I didn't fight, I wouldn't have had gasoline at record lows. I wouldn't have had all of the things that we've done you that are so wall. incredible. Regeneron. Look at what we did for the pandemic. What we did for the pan pandemic was incredible. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Now, more people died under Biden than under me. Then he goes and he says, oh, I think it's good. Well, we're losing 300 people a day or 500 people a day. His statement the other day was terrible about the pandemic. His statement about inflation was you don't even a You don't agree statement. that the pandemic is over, do you? Well, you have 300 to 500 people a day dying, so I would say it's not over. That's a lot of people. A lot more people died in 2021. Right. And he inherited three vaccines and monoclonal antibodies, which I think was underutilized. Absolutely. And I will say this. The vaccines were supposed to take anywhere from 5 to 12 years. And if you look at throughout the world, I would be willing to bet we save 75 million people. Because in 1917, where you had a very serious virus flu, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, 100 million people died. Probably ended World War I. A lot of people Spanish don't flu. know. All the soldiers got sick. Yeah. I mean, it probably Went ended World years. War I. I don't know if you've ever years. heard that. It, was, it yeah. sort of put an end to the war, because all the soldiers from both sides got sick. But 100 million people died. I think it's reasonable to assume that 50 and maybe more, 75, maybe more would have died. But we did a great job. Got it done in nine months instead of five to 12 years, if you could do it. And, you know, we've done things that nobody can believe. But our economy was the strongest. We had 164 million people working. That's more people working. I mean, right now, it's the number's peanuts by compared to that, because they show these phony numbers of 3.5, 3.6%, but they don't judge it right, because a lot of people aren't looking for a job. If you're not looking for a job, even though they're capable of having it, they don't have any incentive to get a job. Our country is in such serious trouble, and the people understand it better than you do and better than I do. The level of anger in this country is incredible.
Do you think Joe Biden, you watch, you observe, he said in 60 Minutes this weekend, watch me. I've been watching him, and I've been playing tapes of him, and I think he is a cognitive wreck. He looks weak, frail, unhealthy, frankly, somewhat decrepit and not up to the job. Now, I doubt very much that Joe Biden would ever, but could ever, even sit down uh, with somebody and have a long-form interview like this. Do this? He no. can't do it. That I can tell you. So, okay, how does the world, you dealt with these world actors, you dealt with President Xi, I, I went to the summit with Kim Jong-un, you've dealt with him, you dealt with Putin, the, you've dealt with hostile regimes. Iran didn't do much when you were president either. They, they didn't seem too inclined to act against us. Iran was in check. North Korea was in check. I got along very well with Kim Jong-un, which is something that you would have ended up in a nuclear war then. Uh, Russia was totally in check. And China was in check. Did you scare the crap out of these guys? It sounds like what you said to the Taliban guy, here's a picture of your house. Well, Did you do that was, with others? They knew there was retribution. They knew that we can't sit back and let these horrible things happen. But with President Xi, as an example, when you're with President Xi and with, when you're with just about all of these world leaders, they're at the top of the game. They are at the top of their game. They're sharp as attack. They're smart. They're brilliant. Somebody said, I called President Xi a very brilliant guy. Well, he's in charge of 1.5 billion people without question. And the press attacks me. How dare he call him brilliant? He's the enemy. No, that has nothing to do with it. But you have to be really on your game to deal with these people. So I don't know. I mean, look, I, I want to see great leadership in this country. Mm -hmm. More important than Republican or Democrat or liberal or conservative. I want to see great leadership. Our country's going to hell. We are a nation in decline. I've asked you a lot of questions about January 6th, and uh, there were certain things that are missing. I don't know why they didn't interview Pelosi or the sergeant of arms or the Capitol Police I chief. I recommended the military go down because well, I knew they'd be a Or Muriel Bowser. And, right. And they purposely kept out. They showed a lot of your speeches and stuff. But I, what I, well, the, it's a different question, though. We had 574 riots in the summer of 2020. Um, this was after the George Floyd. Purposely, all coordinated. Okay. So, and we had thousands of cops pelted with bricks, rocks, bottles of Molotov cocktails, dozens of dead Americans, and billions and billions of property damage. At the time, you offered to cities like Portland over and over again, the National Guard. Right. It was rejected over and over again. Um, That's right. Where's that commission? Well, there's, we can't let that happen in this if country. If I didn't send the guard in against the governor's wishes, right. because, you know, you have to wait, in theory. You have to wait for the governor. I think the one thing I might have done differently, although it proved the point, letting the Democrats go to hell, because that's what they did. They've let their states and cities go to hell. They're in such bad shape. They're, they're crime-ridden. They're evil places. Nobody wants to go there anymore. But, you know, you have to wait for the governor Democrat governor to call and ask for permission to use the guard. If I didn't do it early in Minneapolis, you wouldn't have a city, Sean. You wouldn't have a city there. You mean if the, I didn't, the Minneapolis? If they didn't know I was going into Seattle, remember when they took over a big chunk of Seattle? Yeah. They knew we were going in. I said, we're going in. We couldn't get the governor to agree. We're going in. I don't the care. Chaz I child. may have done it differently. I may have just done what I had to do. Autonomous because zone. Because the crime that was committed. And, you know, they talk about buildings. They were ripping down. They were doing big damage in Portland to the federal courthouses, federal buildings. You these call, you these people remember are this. crazy. You called my show after you saw the interview with Horace Lorenzo Anderson Sr. Yeah, right. And his young son, his namesake, right. was killed in that CHOP, Chaz right. Autonomous Zone. Um, it raises a lot of questions about your future. One of the things that is interesting, you have all of this going on around you and all this chaos. And while you were president, three years, Trump, Russia, 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 okay. All the different countries. And we did more than any other president. How, how, how is it that you can be president, now post-presidency, I've known you 30 years, nothing seems to shake you. What is it about you? Because I think a lot of people would have collapsed by now under the stress and pressure of never-ending investigation and threats of this legal action and that legal action and people all over, commentators all over TV saying, you should be arrested, he should be this and that. It doesn't seem to face you, does so, it? Behind closed doors? Uh, yesterday, I was given a question from a very smart person, very top, yeah. brilliant guy. 
very successful person who you know a little bit through reading about him. He said, do you mind if I ask you? We're talking about something. And then he said, do you mind if I ask you a question? You know, how do you take it? This is a tough guy, too. That's, how do you take that's it? That's what I was basically asking. How do you take it? And I said, do I have a choice? I don't have a choice. Because what I did, and I, and I understand, I never knew they could be this evil, because they're very evil people. They're very evil. If I didn't stop them and sign into law a Statues Act, they wanted to rip down all the statues in this country, including the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, it's not even believable. And as soon as I said, it's 10 years in jail, no anything, it's 10 years, you stay. As soon as I did that, everybody went away. You know, it's an amazing thing. But I really looked at him, I said, do I have a choice? I really don't have a choice. I have to go, you have to go forward. And I think we did just about more. Look, we rebuilt our military, all the... We have, our tax cuts are greater than any tax cuts in the history of America. They are going to raise your taxes. That's why when it comes to the election, you asked about the election before, if you want to have high taxes, if you want to have high crime, if you would, I, I say this, it's so politically incorrect, they tell me, but I don't think so. It gives one of the biggest hands. If you want to have men playing in women's sports, if you want to have all of this horrible education stuff where they're, you know, brainwashing and indoctrinating your children, but you take a look at all how bad they are. It's inconceivable that the Republicans can lose. It's inconceivable to me that they can lose. So I just hope the people uh, get out and vote. On 40, November 48 8th. days from today. Yeah, November 8th. Uh, and, and that's the other thing. So I was attacked today by Democrats from the state of New York. And there's a rule that's an unwritten law. You never do this politically. They won't, you won't see Hunter Biden attacked during this period. 60 to 90 days out before an election, nobody gets attacked. They attacked me. The good news is I, th I just heard my poll numbers went up today. My poll numbers went up when they did a raid on Mar-a-Lago, very substantially. My poll numbers went up for the two phony impeachments, the two fake impeachments. So with all I had to go through, I've done more than just about any president. Do you... And you know what? I kept us out of wars. I'm the only one in 70 years, I think, they said, that kept us out of wars. Do you think that their ultimate goal, if you put all of these things together, is they just don't want you to ever run again for president? Do you think that is a big part of it? In other words, I'll put it another way. If you announced right now, I'm not running in 2024, do you believe all of this would probably just... Yeah. Fade away. I mean, they have to make it look good so it would take a little while. Mm. Yeah, I think we go. I think that, look, but, if you look at the polls, first. But you're not going to do that, are you? First, the Republicans. No, nah, I, like I like this. I like it because we've done such a good job and because a lot of people say nobody else could do it. And if you look at it, it's, it's, it's a brutal kind of a thing because they attack you. And, you know, if you think about it, doesn't everybody want good education? Doesn't everyone want a strong military? Does, especially nowadays when you look at what's going on. No, it's, uh, it's been an incredible period of time. I'm very proud of what we've done. We've rebuilt our military. We even have Space Force. You know how important Space Force? Remember when they took over, they left at Space Force, and the military hit them hard. And Space Force now has turned out to be a very, very so important thing. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.